Okay, hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Tanks Blitz. I am here going to do a review of the T28, which is, I think, most people's least favourite tier 8 um, tank destroyer. Um, I would have to say, in comparison to everything else, people seem to hate on the T28 the most. And why is that? Um, hopefully I'll be able to point out why um, throughout this. But yes, so this is the T-28 Tier 8 uh, American Super Heavy Tank Destroyer. I finally fully upgraded it, um, since I've been grinding out a lot of World of Tanks Blitz with uh, all of the e extra little bonuses they're doing to keep people inside because of coronavirus. So, yeah, why do people not like the T-28? Um, there's multiple reasons, I feel. Um, but we'll go through the stats p as per normal um, so it's got 1150 HP which in comparison to some of the other tank destroyers let's just have a look, Ferdinand's got 1200 I know that much um, I think the Yag Tiger there you go Yag Tiger 88 has got 1400, oh I thought it was 1300, no 1400 okay the Defender has got 1450 um, I think the A has got the British AT has got um, bam this thing's got a whole heck of a lot of health I think yeah 1450 again um, let's have a look at actually at the Japanese one as well the Hori TI which has got 1100 so it's got one of the least amount of HP out of all of the tier 8 tank destroyers, which is concerning, because it is a super heavy tank destroyer, it is slow, it is unmaneuverable, um, in comparison to something like the AT-15A. Um, however, there are multiple other things that we've got to remember, so looking at it here, armour 254 front, 50 side, 50 rear. Um, now remember, that is 254 this area, possibly this area. It is not including the lower glacis area right here, and it's not including these big old cupolas which cover basically the top half of the tank. Um, and that's one of the reasons why people don't like this tank, which is because it's a good tank if it didn't have these things, because you could go hull down and just expose the, this, this part of your hull, your, your gun, and you'd be you know, invulnerable to most things. However, because it's got these two rather large cupolas on it, um, that's why people don't like it, because, for example, the Yag Tiger hasn't got that. The Defender has got them as well, so that, that's something to remember as well. Um, something like the AT has got that cupola on top. Um, what other tank destroyers do I have? I don't really have any other tank destroyers. You've got the Scorpion G, but then that's just a flimsy little fake panther thing. Um, let's just have one last look at the this thing which has got 190 at the front, however, eh, it's also got a little thing there, but because of those cupolas, which is the main problem by the looks of it <laughs> with, with tier 8 tank destroyers, um, because of these things, if people can't go for this, they'll just go for this, and that's especially problematic on tanks which have got accurate guns, for example, the... well... The Germans, for example, with the uh, you know Panther II, the Ferdinand, the Scorpion G, um, the Tiger II, something like the T95E2. What's the accuracy like on this thing? 0.32 dispersion. Anything with half decent accuracy will just go for your go for these, and that's the problem with this thing. Or they'll just go for the for your lower glaciers, especially if you're going over a ridge line. Um, but that, that's the main problem. Also, of course, your side armour is absolutely flimsy. Um, I think... I think anything with 150 or more millimetre gun will overmatch automatically and just go through regardless of angling. You can try and angle it and bounce some shots. However, yeah, things will just go straight through you like nothing if you so much as glance it at them. The same goes for the rear as well. This part is sloped, so if their shot goes high, it can bounce off of the engine deck, but however, this is a massive rear American ass to hit. And so 50 mils side and rear, the strongest is the front, but it's got these. 
and it's so slow that you can't really outmaneuver many things. Even with the two, you know, I've got improved fuel and standard fuel on this thing. I bung them straight on because I knew how terrible this thing was, especially with the stock engine, a tier six engine on a tier eight super heavy. Look at that thing. Um, yeah, even with this is still tier six, but it's got at least 252 more horsepower. But yeah, it's just completely immobile to try and use anything other than the armor, which is not going to happen because the side armor is pretty flimsy, and you got these bits right up there, the cabrolas. So that's the problem with that. Also, as I said, super heavy tank destroyer, very slow, 20 max speed, you know, kilometers per hour, 10 reverse. Average speed is the max 20. It's a super heavy tank destroyer again. You know, what can I say? 13 power to weight horsepower per ton ratio. It's not great. <laughs> Weighs nearly 60 tons with a 780 horsepower engine. Don't forget that's including my provisions here, my improved fuel and my standard fuel. If I was to take these things off and have it as someone who didn't have consumables on would see it. It's a 695 horsepower engine with an 11.6 power to weight ratio. Hull's reverse speed is less than 30 degrees per second. Um, you know, it, it's just not great at all. Um, yeah, it's just a completely a mobile tank, which is the same with the AT. You know, the AT-15A. Um, it is the same deal with that. That's also pretty slow, pretty immobile. However, it's to do with the gun arc, I think, with the AT 15A, which makes it more usable to most people than something like the um, T 28. So, let's have a look at the gun then. It's a the top gun is a 120 mil. Um, it's the same gun as you get on the. Um, T95 for Doom Turtle. The stock gun is a 90 mil, which is not that fun. The next gun is a 105, which is usable, but not not exactly the best gun to use on this tank. You really want to go for the 120 um, before you go for the Doom Turtle, because you can then use that gun on the Doom Turtle, as you can see there, instead of using the default 105 which has got 198 pen against tier 9 and 10 vehicles. That's just not going to work. So you're going to want to go for the 120. And how is the 120? Well, 4.3 second aim time is... It's all right. It's not too bad. Pretty good dispersion, 0.34. That's not too shabby. Just over 3,000 um, DPM, which is, you know, 7.76 second reload. That's not too bad. I mean, that's comparable to the 128 on the Yarg Tiger at tier 9, so that's pretty good DPM. Average pen as well is very comparable to the 128 um, as well. It's got less average damage than the 128, but it's got the same pen as the one um, as the 128 on the mouse, for example, which has got 248 average pen with AP, 297 with APCR and 60 with HE. Um, so you can smack through those <laughs> those uh, thin, uh, high-tier German um, tank destroyers or light tanks. Um, average damage, 400. Yeah, that's pretty standard for 120. 340 with APCR and 515 with HE. It's all pretty good. Now, the gun depression is also probably something that people will moan about. Only 5 degrees. I mean, the Russian tanks look at it and laugh in gun depression at that point. It's not as bad as the Chinese tanks with their, like, 2 degrees gun gun depression on the Type T-34, but that's still not that great gun depression. Um, you know, only 5 gun elevation, pretty good, 20, but 5 degrees per se, you know, 5 gun depression is not that great. Um, also, one more point is that the gun has got traverse arcs of 10 either side, which is not a huge problem um, when you compare it to something like the, you know, Ferdinand, the elephant, which but that even so, that's got 15 degrees either side of the main gun. Um, if we look at the AT-15, which is what I'm comparing this to mostly, because they're both super heavy tank destroyers. Um, that's the test dude. Oh no, we want the AT-15. Um, even with the AT-15 here, 
does it tell me? Gun arcs. Yes, 2525, which is why people prefer the 8015, I think, over the T28 when it comes to super heavies. Because with that sort of gun arc, you can get it 25 degrees, which is somewhere over there. So if you're coming around a corner, and the, say for example, this edge of this, um, of this thing here, if that edge there was a building, your gun arc at your maximum, you'd probably get it to about there. You can come around the building and hide these two things from any sort of harm, at which point you've got a very, very solid armor profile right there, which you can just happily DPM away from the relative comfort and safety of a building. Because with that sort of gun arc, yeah, you can sort of get pretty good um, cover to use your how much? 228 frontal armor, which, although not as much as the uh, as the T28, if you're looking at the T28, you've got the gun arc. Say that's the building. You've got the gun arc to sort of poke out about there-ish, which means people can quite easily just put a hole into this thing from wherever they're looking. They could just sit, aim, bang, straight into their 400 damage off of your not that great hit point pull. So, there's the main rant about this thing, before we get into the provisions, and let me put my consumer, let me put my provisions back on, because you're going to want them on this tank. Um, so, yeah, mobility is absolutely terrible. Um, it's completely immobile. It has got decent armor, it's got decent armor, I've bounced a fair amount of shells from the, on this thing, however these two things are the problem but again you can you can do the old wiggle them around to mess up the opponent's shot you can do that as much as as much as this thing can wiggle um, and that also bounces them a couple a couple of times because you know these are at least rounded they're not completely flat like some of the german ones um, so they are at least rounded so you can occasionally bounce shots off this but you know there's the big main weak spot there um, but the last point i want to make is about this thing. Why do people like the Doom Turtle when it is pretty much the exact same tank as the T28? And that's to do with how the Doom Turtle works. And I say that because the Doom Turtle has got this extra pair of tracks. That's the only difference. It's got nearly the same um, gun mantlet as this thing, the T29, uh, T28, as you can see, there's the gun mantlet on the T28, there's the cupolas on there, there's the sloping, there's the rear. And then we look at the Doom Turtle, and we can see there's the sloping there, there's that, there's the gun mantlet. They cut off the frontal piece here, and made it just a complete slab, which is fair enough. But so, there goes that area. And they also added the extra side armour of track. As you can see, this is where the ropes or the um, the hooks would attach in order to take it off in a workshop when they need to get to the inner layer of track easy. You know, these are all the hooking points for them to literally just unclip, bang, off it comes on a crane. In which case, why do people like this tank when it is pretty much the exact same tank as this? And it's literally just to do with that extra layer of track. Because if we have a look, the side armor goes up to 133 and also it's completely sliced. This thing is a beast. It's, it, there's a reason why it's called the Doom Turtle because the armor might have been improved over the 50 mil. however it's also completely sloped at a pretty decent, that's like 50 degrees angling or more perhaps which means that that 133 goes up exponentially when you're doing something like this. It just ping, ping, ping all day. Yes, there are still these areas here, and yes, this is still a weak spot down here. However, you know, the side armour is absolutely far better than the T28, which is why people say this thing is a terrible tank, and people say the Doom Turtle, which is basically this thing, except this has been removed, and it's had an extra layer of tracks added on that's the only reason why um, people prefer the Doom Turtle over that, which is a, a fair fair thing to say because 50mm of side armour at tier 8 is absolutely terrible, uh, especially for you know a super heavy tank destroyer like this. Um, but there you go, so 
that's just that to do with the T20. I've gone on long enough about this thing, so we'll just quickly go over. Consumables, you've got your standard repair first aid fire, you've got engine power boost, you've got adrenaline, and you've got the multi-purpose, which is those three rolled into one. You all know what those do. Provisions, you're going to want improved fuel and standard fuel, which is 3 and 10% respectively to engine power and tire traverse. You're going to want to bang both of them on at the same time, because this thing is completely immobile and is even more immobile if you don't have these two. So if you have the credits and you don't mind losing, or you can make back the credits on a different tank, use standard and improved fuel, because you'll need it to work effectively in this tank and you might as well bung on a crate of, a crate of cola or can of cola um, which is 3 and 10% respectively to group mastery um, just for the extra DPM and all that because you might as well and then you've got your protective kit which is all those things so consumable provisions this is one of the few tanks I say use them because generally I don't use provisions you all know this however on some tanks such as this Provisions are useful, and the Tankenstein, for example, or a mediocre tank, for example, this tank. As for your ammo, you carry 40 rounds of 120 ammo, which with decent pen you don't need a lot of AP, uh, APCR, rather. You can roll around quite happily, banging through the front of Lervers with your 120, which has got nearly 250mm of pen. It's a, good, it's a good gun, mounted on not as good of a tank. Um... So yeah, you're not likely to run out of rounds anytime soon, so you don't really have to worry um, with your rounds, so you can go ahead and mix them up as you want, but you don't need that much APCR, you can get through most things that you'll fight at your tier. Uh, and then you're going to want gun rammer, you don't need calibrated shells because you've got decent pen for a tier 8 tank destroyer that will only ever see tier 9s, and if the mouse can do things at, with that pen at tier 10, you can do it at tier 8. Um, so gun rammer to get the DPM up uh, and the reload time down going to want improved modules for the extra track durability. Um, you could go with defense system but honestly you don't, the last thing this thing needs is having your tracks blown off because unlike the mouse you can't just angle up and tank the damage whilst your tracks come in the back online. You're going to want to have that track durability because of your flimsy side armor. If you get stuck at an angle people are just going to pump shots into that flimsy side armor, take down your not that great health pool and you're going to die. So you're going to want that. And then coated optics because you are... The T-28 and the T-95 were designed to be assault tanks. They are assault guns the same way as the Tiger is kind of an assault gun. The same way as the Tortoise was designed to be an assault gun. You keep on moving and you push the battlefield forwards. So you're going to want coated optics. Because whilst it can be a good tank destroyer, as in sniper, your armour lends itself to being at the front lines, bouncing the shots, um, for your mediums to do the work or whatever. So coated optics, I would say, is more important over the camo net. Um, enhanced gun lane drive, get that aim time down. Aim time's otherwise 4.7 seconds, which is nearly 5 seconds, which is not that great. So enhanced gun lane drive for when you're sitting stationary. Um, enhanced armor, might as well. It doesn't really help with your front, with your side armor, but it helps with your front armor. Um, so. I'd say enhanced armor is not a bad bet on this tank, otherwise you can go improved assembly and get yourself to over 1200 HP, which is not that great, but it's at least better. It's tied with the Scorpion G in terms of base HP, so that gives you an idea. Um, and then you're going to want engine accelerator because you'll get your hull traverse speed to above 32, uh, 30 degrees per second if you have on the consumables like I have. Um, you could go with straight up improved control but really you only get a little bit more hull traverse so I'd say the better power to weight ratio is more beneficial compared to an extra one degrees of hull traverse. So engine accelerator to get a little bit of hull traverse um, and the extra power to weight is more important. Um, so I'd say go with that. Don't go with vert stabs. I'd say refined gun because you're not going to be firing on the move or really whilst turning, so I wouldn't go with vert stabs. I'd say refined gun is a better choice for this kind of thing. You could go with enhanced tracks, however, like I said, if your track gets blown off and you can't repair it, you are mostly dead. Um, so really, it's a toss-up between you as to which one you want. I'd say enhanced tracks is still going to be slightly more useful for if you manage to kill the person that's shooting at you and you're not getting shot at yourself. 
um, then you can just let it sit and repair itself and then you'll get it back up to fully working instead of the yellow like it normally does uh, and then your choice of whatever the hell those two things are so that's my overly long review of this thing which is basically ranting on all of its flaws however I haven't had that much of a problem in the tank yes it can be annoying yes it can be slow but then so can the tortoise and so can you know for example the elephant so can you know several other things that are also like this however I can see I can definitely understand why people don't like it however I've not had too much of a problem with it it's been annoying yes I have had games where I've done two shots of damage and died because it's not that great of a tank however I think it does have its pros it does have its cons um, however people give it too much crap I think I can see its flaws and I can see where people come from but overall it's not that bad of a tank destroyer I've had some good games in this tank where I've enjoyed playing it and most of the other games where they've been mediocre or eh it's been not too bad because I've at least had fun driving the tank so overall yes you can sell it as soon as you've got the doom turtle or you can just grind straight through it but if you want to keep it that's fine I'm gonna keep it why the hell not it's not too bad of a tank so yes I'll thank you all for watching and goodbye